स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया
opposite coupled uh, can you see uh, it is not apparent uh, because this essentially HS is we can write it in terms of temperature also it is coupled actually through this ok. So, the, through these things. So, uh, this omega i if you remember this has a form of uh, like k times uh, production rate of C j nu j dashed ok j is equal to 1 to j is equal to 1 to n all right and of course this also comes here mm. and um, ok let us write it down right so to see basically how this coupling happens so i what i say is that it's uh, this coupling between these two things happen through here mm. ok and uh, the coupling happens because omega i is nothing but nu i double dashed minus nu i dashed if you assume a one step reaction that omega i is essentially contributed from one reaction itself of course it is coming from all reactions and you have to sum over all k but i will not go to that right now and then you have the k term that is a uh, this k is a reaction rate constant times the continued product j is equal to 1 to n c j times nu j dashed and then k is nothing but b times t to the power of alpha exponential of minus E a by r 0 t right. So, you see that this in the species equation when you write this, this is the omega i form and then this k contains this temperature dependence. So, actually even though it is not apparent here where temperature arises of course, the temperature comes through here right. So, uh, the reaction rate contains a constant uh, the reaction rate constant contains temperature. So, that affects uh, changes in the species mass fraction and that of course, uh, you see that um, of course, temperature changes density also right and then uh, this also changes here ok. And you see that C j is essentially is a species uh, um, concentration and we can write this C j as essentially in terms of mass fraction. So, this energy conservation the specific the sensible enthalpy actually couples with the species equation through this law of mass action term right. Uh, so, this is how the coupling happens and furthermore when temperature changes the density also changes and then you have to consider the continuity equation and then um, all these things. Uh, of course, uh, the flow also accelerates when the density changes um, because of the simple thing that your uh, continuity equation is nothing but d rho dt plus divergence of rho u vector um, is equal to 0. So, when the when the flow accelerates, uh, so when the density changes the flow also accelerates and of course, your momentum uh, also changes because the rho u is equal to fixed, but then, then the flow also accelerates and that is happened due to uh, associated with a small change in pressure, but of course, we have neglected the pressure here. But here uh, this gives you an idea of how the coupling is happening, it is very important at this stage to understand that this uh, the how the coupling actually takes place through these different um, uh, sets of equations, we are because there are plenty of equations involved, and but it is very important to understand what each term represents and how each equation is coupled to the other equation uh, because uh, if it was not coupled then your life would have been much simpler we would, ha would have solved this separately but that we cannot do that if you are solving if you are doing a CFD calculation of a combustor of a gas turbine engine you need to solve all of these equations together ok. Um, and of course, you note that this is for ith species. So, if there are if you have a um, if you have a thousand species, then there will be thousand species conservation equations ok. And this will run from i is equal to n 2 that is i the summations will run then from i is equal to 1 to 1000 h i naught uh, omega i naught. So, this all the species the entire chemistry reaction mechanisms that you see gets concentrated into this term and this term ok where you need to sum over all the species to get the heat release rate uh, contribution from all the species to get the heat release rate and you need to have uh, the species equation for all the species that is then you will end up with 1000 equations. So, if you have 1000 species of course, due to mass conservation um, uh, because of the fact that of summation y i will be equal to 1 you need to solve for um, uh, one less equation, uh, but uh, the total number of equations then you will have is that um, uh, is essentially you see. You see uh, you will have to solve uh, one continuity equation, three momentum equation, three because uh, velocity is a vector, momentum is essentially a vector, one energy equation, uh, 
but that energy equation will contrib contain contribution from all these species i is equal to 1 to n and then n minus 1 species equations depending on the number of species you have. Okay. Mm, and then uh, mm, of course, then you see that it is 2 plus 3 5, 5 plus n minus 1 that is equal to n plus 4. So, typically for a large hydrocarbon like kerosene, if you have like say uh, uh, 1000 species, then it will be 1004 react uh, equations, partial 1004 partial differential equations that you need to solve. Now, this looks very uh, challenging, of course, it is challenging, but then this is why it is so exciting and it is so complex. Okay? And, uh, but uh, we need to understand it at a very detailed level because, uh, because combustion as you see is uh, very, very important if you have to improve modern engines, if you have to design new engines, um, if you have to make current engines more efficient in terms of uh, producing more power, more thrust and uh, have greater efficiency. So, that is why it is very, very important to understand them. Now, so uh, uh, the characteristics of the simplified conservation equation is that, uh, that we have retained the unsteadiness, we have retained the diffusion. By diffusion, we mean both uh, species diffusion as well as uh, 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 thermal diffusion that is heat conduction and we have retained convection which is the first order quantity and of course, we have retained reaction rate because combustion is represented by the reactions. Right? And uh, of course, it is also contains diffusion and reaction. Now, density as we have seen that uh, rho v and uh, d appear together with rho and rho v as rho d and also applies uh, as, uh, through the Lewis number. But as, as such, as you see that in a, in a, in a combustion, um, um, in combustion, the density is a very, very important. We cannot as, uh, absolutely assume density is constant. That is one very big difference that is um, if these are not as such compressible uh, we, uh, compressible flows in the sense that these are not high Mach number flows. That combustion can happen in low Mach number example in a gas turbine engine. Combustion happens in a Mach number of about 0.1, right? 0 0.1, 0 0.2 like something like that. Mm, uh, and the pressure inside a gas turbine engine of course, it is a combustor is at a very high pressure 30 bar, but the pressure does not change at all in a gas turbine engine. It pressure, pressure change is very small in compared to uh, how it changes to the compressor, how it changes to the turbine. Right? Because the pressure change is very small inside the combustor, but temperature changes by a huge amount and because temperature changes, the density changes. So, we can assume it is like an isobaric flow. Mm, of course, it is not actually isobaric when you solve for the momentum equation, you need to retain your pressure. Uh, if you are doing a CFD calculation, you need to retain your pressure terms. But uh, it is uh, it is close to an isobaric flow, but it is strongly temperature variation varying flow. There is strong homo non homogeneities in terms of temperature. S temperature rises as soon as you have the flame, and of course uh, you have density changes. So as soon as the temperature rises, the density also drops. Okay, because pressure is constant, so P is equal to O R T. If pressure is constant, the so density has to drop when temperature rises, right? So these are this combustion flows are characterized by uh, small change in pressure, very large change in temperature and very large change in density. Okay? So, these are the hallmarks of combustion. Mm, all right. And then we will see later that also this uh, change of density and change of uh, pressure, change of temperature, no change of pressure, change of temperature happens in a very small regions in space and uh, as, a, as such uh, that is an artifact of the fa uh, that is that arises because your uh, activation energy, your activation energy is a very large quantity and that uh, when you are because of the nature of the uh, reaction rate constant, it is essentially k is e to the power minus e by rt. So, when the, when the, when the activation energy is very large, your temperature rises in a very thin region and that is why the flames are thin and um, uh, that is why you have got very strong uh, temperature gradients that is temperature rises in a very small amount of time. So, that is why temperature gradients are large and when temperature gradients are large in diffusion because you see diffusion is essentially arise uh, comes as like a grad of rho uh, lambda grad T. So, it is essentially del square T, right? So, it is essentially a Laplacian of temperature mm, or was, is a Laplacian of species uh, mass fraction. So, uh, when temperature, when the when the uh, gradients are very large, this uh, del square, the second derivatives are also typically large in these regions and uh, that is why diffusion becomes a very, very important phenomena. So, uh, combustion is essentially as you will see later within the flame, combustion is essentially a, 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 a competition between diffusion uh, or not a competition, it is essentially a balance between diffusion and uh, and reactions right so um, and then that happens uh, uh, can be can be uh, uh, can happen in a flow that is uh, convecting also
but we will come to these things later. So, the, and the of course important thing is that the sign of the diffusion term is negative and that is arises because temperature changes, uh, heat flux changes from when you go from um, uh, when you go from uh, heat always uh, flows from a temperature of high, uh, high temperature to a low temperature region. All right. So, now the thing is that the chemical source term as you see that we can write it now as like uh, in a terms of species mass fraction um, if you have uh, 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 of course, there will be some constants in terms of molecular weights etcetera and then we can write the um, omega i that is the reaction rate constant is essentially y i uh, n j times y j uh, n j uh, it is of minus e y r 0 t is nonlinear in both y and t. Okay. It is nonlinear in y because it has got exponents which are the stoichiometric coefficients and it is nonlinear in t because of the e to the power of minus e by r 0 t and uh, it couples the conservation equations uh, for y i and t. So, um, now, uh, so this is a problematic thing because uh, it appears in both uh, species equation as well as an enthalpy equation, but there is a very nonlinear coupling between both the uh, species and temperature. And uh, it also, uh, so this is one very big uh, problem, right? Uh, that uh, in uh, both in the species as well as in the temperature equations, uh, you have uh, this uh, reaction rate, uh, uh, this chemical source term, uh, which can be either in terms of the species production rate or in terms of the heat release rate. Um, so, but uh, the temperature temp dependence is in this manner, right? This is a problem. So, um, the problem uh, can be uh, circumvented uh, by looking for something uh, which such that we can somehow get rid of this uh, this chemical source term okay and for that uh, the chemical source term what does it make what makes this quantities non conservative of course uh, as you see that hs is uh, the specific enthalpy is not a conserved scalar neither is yi because it has got a source and a sink term respectively right so uh, the idea is that we need to search for some quantities which is a uh, conserved during a reaction now stoichiometry relates the reaction entities and that tells us that this conserved quantities uh, that there can be conserved quantities in a reaction for example this total enthalpy now total enthalpy in a reaction what happens is that as we have seen in chemical equilibrium when we discussed about anaerobic flame temperature is essentially the enthalpy of formation going into uh, becoming enth sensible enthalpy when the reaction is complete right so um, of course then the total enthalpy does not uh, change uh, during this. So, then this suggests that if we can be intelligent, uh, uh, we are clever, we can find out quantities where which are essentially conserved. Now, the, but the question is that uh, it is very difficult to find out quantities which will be conserved in a convective diffusive medium. Uh, so, uh, we can find out this uh, con quantities like a uh, like a combination of different species mass fractions or a combination of a as, as, uh, of, a, of a species mass fraction and uh, and sensible enthalpy or total enthalpy uh, which will be essentially total enthalpy. But uh, and we will see that in certain conditions we can make them conserved, but it will be very difficult to find something which is generically conserved which is generally conserved in a convective diffusive medium. Okay. So, for now we will need to find out the coupling function uh, formulations and uh, we will go into that. Uh, so, this as I said that the reason for the coupling function formulation arises because, uh, because uh, uh, we have seen that both in the species equation as well as in the temperature equation uh, this chemical source term which is on the right hand side that has a nonlinear dependence on both species mass fraction as well as on the uh, temperature. Now, of course, when you have nonlinear dependence, it is difficult to solve, all right. Uh, and uh, uh, so, of and more importantly, that uh, these appears in both the species and the, uh, and the and the temperature equations, which make them coupled. That you cannot solve this individually. Okay, you have to solve all of them together because these are coupled through this thing. So, when you are talking about the species equation, uh, to once again go back to this, when you are talking about the um, if you remove, remove this, when you are talking about the, um, if you are talking about the energy equation say that is uh, the, uh, uh, um, uh, if you are talking about the energy equation, um, you have on the right hand side uh, say this guy, uh, this uh, total heat release rate and this uh, heat release rate contains the species reaction rate, the species production rate on the species consumption rate and which contains, uh, of course, it contains temperature, but it also contains the species mass fractions, right. 
And so that is how this uh, sensible enthalpy is essentially coupled to the species mass fraction. And when you consider the species conservation equation, of course, you see that this also contains the species uh, production rate. Obviously, it will contain the species production rate and the species um, uh, consumption rate. But this also contains temperature through the reaction rate constant. This contains in this equation. Uh, temperature is coupled to the species mass fraction through the law of mass action because omega i is described by law of mass action whereas y i is coupled to temperature in the species conservation equation because omega is also dependent on the reaction rate constant which is a function of temperature which is an Arrhenius dependent on temperature right e to the power of minus e by r t. So, this is how both this equation becomes strongly coupled right and of course then it means that you have to if you have n species uh, like the 1000 species you have to solve 1000 equations together and that to nonlinear equations which becomes very demanding. So, what we do is that uh, we formulate this something called a coupling function formulation. So, uh, which uh, which will not contain this uh, right hand side at all uh, which will uh, be basically and so that we can basically solve this equation itself and gain the required understanding of how the species and uh, temperature will evolve. Is it at all possible to do that? We will see.